So high beta stocks have been getting absolutely crushed in the market since about late October of this year. And today we had some nice recovery in a lot of the stocks. And we're wondering at this point, is this just a pump fake and yet more downside is ahead? Or are we gonna see some seasonal strength into the end of the year? We did see lots of buying in high beta stocks, including quantum stocks. We're gonna look at a bunch of quantum stocks specifically in this video. And we're going to look at Ondis as well. We're going to look at a couple of watch lists, a few pieces of news, some sentiment indicators, and we're going to do a special preview of an interview that's coming out this weekend as well. If you haven't already, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe if you are inclined and that way you'll get more content like this. All right, let's jump in. So today we saw Quantum Emotion QNCCF reach $4.20 before some sell-off at the end of the day, still up 15% on the day, and this marks a massive rally. We're gonna look at that on the chart later. D-Wave had an 8% day, and as you can see down the Quantum watch list here, QUBT, IonQ, Rigetti, pretty much all the Quantum stocks had some optimism in them today. Then taking a look at another watch list and a lot of different stocks that I own, Ondis had an 18% day, an absolutely monstrous day. Saluna, so which had gone all the way down to about $1.30 a share, had a 17% day. And Resolve, which has been an AI stock that's been beat up pretty considerably since I entered it, had a good day as well. And down the watch list we see even like Nebius and Navitas and Poet, lots of stocks that are on the riskier side and the higher beta side had a pretty solid day. So what's this special preview you're asking? Well, some of you may know, know a guy named Scott Aronson. And we actually, I had him on the channel and had the pleasure of interviewing him. I have already released this video to the members of the channel. Actually, that went out last night. So they've had a lot of chance to engage with the video and digest the content. And sometime this weekend, I'll be releasing it to the public, but let's go ahead and do a sneak peek right now. Uh, for me, the number one thing is just disproving the people who said that quantum computing was impossible. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. I just, yes. I just, I just, I just want to see those people sort of forced to accept, you know, the full reality of quantum mechanics. Uh, <laughs> is that there's all these early Bitcoin wallets, okay, including actually Satoshi's wallets, okay, uh, which you know have not been touched since like the beginning of Bitcoin, which are now worth something like two hundred billion dollars. Okay, and which are only protected by this elliptic curve cryptography. There was a, a very big moment for quantum computing just you know within this past year, right? I don't know if you want to call it a Chat GPT moment, you know. I, uh, 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 but 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 what, what what we've seen is that you know we finally have hardware that sort of really works well. So I'm very excited to bring that interview to you all. You can look for that maybe as soon as tomorrow or Sunday. All right, taking a look at the fear and greed index. So we're gonna look at some sentiment indicators. We are right at neutral on the borderline of fear. And VIX was actually, the VIX indicator was down to its lowest point in a while, 1491. Bitcoin has still been struggling to maintain in the mid 80s. And there's been some interesting conversation on social media about Bitcoin and quantum. And there seems to be some disagreement in the community, uh, in the Bitcoin community, which I'm not really an investor in Bitcoin. I never have been. But there seems to be some disagreement in the community that Bitcoin is vulnerable to a quantum attack. And Scott Aronson has some very interesting takes on that. So. Taking a look at some stock movement, some stock price movement, we're gonna look at four hour chart of IonQ. And I just wanna go back and kind of look to the left here. I think what, what the most important thing to do is look at the overall trend. And for IonQ, if I just simplify this, since October of last year to now, it's been holding basically an uptrend. However, it's had a pretty significant pullback down into the 30s, which was 
This was a zone that IMQ was trading in for a long time. And now it does seem that it wants to trade higher as we can see that 50 to 55 area. And as I've talked about on the channel before, I would love to see INQ just hang around 50 to $60 and kind of build a base of support before its next leg up. If that was to play out, it would look something like this and then maybe the next leg up. Now that's in a bull case. And in a bearish case, the stock would continue to move down and maybe retest some former support. So INQ, of course, has had a lot of news and they're working hard to bring fault tolerant quantum computing by 2029, 2030. And there's lots of steps along the way. They're making lots of acquisitions and I'm uh, very much bullish on INQ over the next three to four years. D-Wave quantum, if we're looking at a longer time period for the chart, D-Wave has been pretty strong. We can see something similar here where D-Wave has been holding a pretty solid uptrend at the start of 2025. This was a three, four, five dollar stock. And we closed today at just shy of 27. Now I'm going to be going to the D-Wave Qubits 2026 conference. So if any of you are going, let me know in the comments below. Last year, they had a fantastic conference in Phoenix. This year, it's going to be at Boca Raton. And I am looking forward to it. They put on a really great conference, one of the best conferences I've ever been to. And I've been to a lot of professional conferences in my career. I'm looking forward to hearing from Andrew, who's going to be there, AT&T, and who knows what other plans that D-Wave has for that conference. Maybe we get an update on their technology or roadmap. But looking at more recent price action, we can see recently we actually dropped into the teens momentarily, which seems to be a low for at least the past few months. It's moved up. It's got rejected off this 2871, and it's kind of holding here in this zone between 22 and 28. So the question is, will we have more market days like today where there's more risk on and high beta stocks are being bought? And will quantum as a sector gain back some of the momentum it had around the middle of the year that might help it. Now, I'm not one that is saying I want these stocks to go crazy high. I would be fine if they just stabilized. And what that would look like to me is something like this for D-Wave, maybe just bouncing in between 20, 27. That's in my ideal world, build up some stability, give D-Wave some room to breathe. And then on the next major catalyst, then we could see a move up. And obviously when stocks move like crazy high in a short period of time, they also can go down very quickly. So we've seen that with D-Wave. All right, so Rigetti is really interesting because Rigetti this month, we're supposed to be getting their next chip. And Rigetti has a very, of all the uh, stocks we've looked at, they've had this very, like look at that uptrend. Like there's really no denying that since the start of the year, Rigetti has traded higher and higher. Now it had a massive pop to almost $60 a share and is down trading around this 20 to $25 mark. It's got rejected recently off about 29. And we're kind of in this channel where it's kind of no man's land. Is it gonna come back down here to the 16, 17 area and use that as support? Or is it gonna go down further? That's the question. And Rigetti has one task and one task only, and that is to deliver on their technical roadmap. So in my base case for Rigetti, what I'm seeing, if we do see their chip, I think this will get investors excited. And I do want to take this opportunity to remind people that the only metric that I am looking at as a quantum investor is technical milestones at this point in time. I'm not looking at revenues. I'm looking at technical milestones. So can Rigetti deliver that 100 qubit chip? Now, if that's the case, in my base case, I see Rigetti having a very nice candle. I could see it moving up and maybe getting up into this 36 to 44 area, which we have price history up here. I think there will be a lot of buying and optimism. And of course, with Rigetti, we have lots of examples 
of when the bulls come out, they come out in droves and they push the stock higher. So if we're speculating or predicting what might happen with Rigetti, if they deliver the goods, I anticipate a move higher on the stock. All right, CCCX, Churchill Capital. So we had Matt Kinsella on the channel and the stock has had the SPAC merger that's happening with Churchill Capital Group. We can see that there was an initial pump and excitement up to around 25, 26, 27 dollars a share. And then it's really been straight down since then. What investors are worried about is the SPAC merger aspect of this. What I would remind investors of is the fact that inflection is a revenue first commercialized quantum model, not strictly neutral atom quantum computers, but also sensing and they have different technologies that inflection is in. So I still think that inflection is one of the best deals in quantum at this point in time. As you'll see in the Scott Aronson interview this weekend, he ranks neutral atom as one of his top three computing modalities. And it's always interesting to hear from academia and someone as esteemed as Scott Aronson, um, which modalities he feels are in the lead. Okay, QNCCF, this stock, of course, we had Francis Belito on the show not too long ago, and he talked to us about the electron tunneling and quantum emotion as a company and where the stock is going is anyone's best guess. But what we can see since 2024, when this stock was 14 cents to touching $4.20, it made its all-time highs today. So there's some very exciting price action. It actually blasted through its previous high of 367. And you can see it marked out a couple areas of interest for me. Now, I did share with the Discord today that this stock is volatile and it did reject off 367 and it had a 55% move to the downside. So since the stock has moved so much to the upside, there could be some volatility ahead and there may be better entry points. So keep that in mind as you're looking at quantum emotion. But the field of post-quantum, or should I call it pre-quantum more accurately, you want to have quantum cybersecurity in place before fault-tolerant quantum computers. After, when your systems become vulnerable, it's already too late. So I see quantum emotion, CLSQ, and the companies that are operating in this space that I see more demand in the future if I had to predict at this point in time based on everything we know. So is this just the beginning of a bigger rally for quantum emotion? It's very hard to say. They they have a lot of great news and press lately that's driving this price movement. I don't have time to get into it, but I'm thinking about making a specific video about quantum emotion. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see that. But for now, be cautious about entry. There probably will be opportunities to get in at a lower price. CLSQ has been a little bit all over the place, but like the other quantum stocks, it's holding a little bit of an uptrend. So if we just kind of connect the, the bottom and we keep the optimistic sort of outlook in October, this was about $9 a share and it fell off a cliff down to about $3 and change. There's a higher low, which is bullish in the near term. And we know that LAS can absolutely explode on any given day, giving 20, 30, 40% candles to the upside or the downside. So quantum stocks carry a lot of risk and it's important that you do your own diligence. And if you're gonna be in these names, then make sure you research and understand the risk that you're taking on. And our final stock today is a non-quantum stock. This is a drone stock. And actually, uh, Gene Inger, a regular guest and analyst that comes on the show, he had first brought on this to our attention when this was a two, three dollar stock, which is about the entry that I was lucky enough to get because this stock has already tripled in 2025 alone. And of course, there's just going to be a lot of push in the military, in the Department of War, and for in worldwide relief really, for not only quant, um, not only drone 
that are offensive but defensive drones as well. And Andes has some very interesting offerings on that front. So Andes has had amazing bullish candles today. It closed up, I think, 18%, and it's holding a recent nice uptrend. But as you can see, Andes is kind of like those other high beta stocks. It can move down quickly. It cut it, it was cut in half from about this $12 point to sub $6. So these all these stocks that we talked about today are not for the faint of heart. Kind of got a pay to play. And risk is the name of the game. If you can't handle the heat, get out of the kitchen. And with that being said, really enjoyed today in the market. I don't know if this is a pump fake or not. I know we're going into lower volume next week and maybe that will be uh, good for high beta stocks. If this is setting the tone for the rest of the year, then maybe we have some more green days ahead. So I'll leave it on that note. Hope you have a great weekend. We'll see you in the next one. I hope you really enjoyed that content. If you would like to support the YouTube channel and the website, thequantumbull.com, I have three different membership options. I have the Quantum Bull, which starts at $4.99 a month, and you get members only videos and polls. The Golden Bull, which gets you access to our Discord, where we talk about trades. I share my buys and sells. I provide trade alerts, and we talk about all kinds of different stocks. To join, just click subscribe, the plus button by the subscribe, and you'll get a prompt and you can choose which level is best for you.